Dismissed. If you have your Bibles, I'm just going to read a couple verses today, a few verses from James chapter 1. James chapter 1, beginning at verse 16. Appreciate our worship team today. Amen. Good to see every one of you. James chapter 1, beginning at verse 16, this is what the brother of Jesus wrote. He says, do not err, my beloved brethren, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Of his own will begat he us with the word of truth, that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Amen. Let's lift up our voice again together and just ask the Lord to speak to our hearts today. Father, we thank you, God, so much for your spirit, God, for your love and grace today, God, for your truth of your word, God, and just your uh, grace and mercy that you show towards us. And we ask today, God, that you would help us, that you'd encourage us, God, and allow this word to minister to us today, God. Let, it be, let us be receptive to it, God. Let it come into our hearts and into our minds, God, and to grow and flourish, God, that we may accomplish your perfect will in our life. We thank you, Lord. We love you, and we give you all of the praise today. And everyone said, in Jesus' name, Jesus. amen. Let's clap our hands to him again in thanksgiving. We thank you, God. We praise you. We worship you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You may be seated. So in the New Living Translation, this is what it sounds like of the scripture that I just read, James 1, 16 through 18. He says, don't be misled. Don't be misled, my dear brothers and sisters. Don't be misunderstood. I want you to understand this and to receive this. I don't want you to be confused in this. He says, whatever is good and perfect comes down to us from God our Father. And we have to understand, church, that when God gives us something, it is good and perfect. We may not see it as good and perfect, but we know that all things work together for the good to them that love God are the called according to his purpose. I think sometimes we misquote that scripture. In fact, I think people even sing songs about it incorrectly. They say, I know all things work together good for me. It doesn't say that. It says all things work together for the good. For them that love God and are the called according to his purpose. The good is according to God's plan, according to God's will, according to God's direction for our life. I want God's good in my life. Amen? How about you? He says, don't be misled. Whatever is good and perfect comes down to us from God our Father who created all the lights in the heavens. He never changes or casts a shifting shadow. He chose to give birth to us by giving us his true word, and we, out of all creation, became his prized possession. Amen. This morning, with the help of the Lord, I would like to preach this message that Jesus is just for me, and Jesus is just for you. Do you believe that today? Amen. Jesus is just for me, and he is just for you. Jesus is the perfect fit for everybody. They may not realize it. We may not understand it. I know that for myself, when I first came to an understanding of truly what God wanted for me in my life and truly wanting that relationship, and we're still getting there, amen? We've not arrived. And, and that understanding this, that Jesus fits into my life, into every area that I allow him to. Yeah. 
He is a perfect fit. And it's not that Jesus has to change, but he slowly and, and according to his will and his spirit begins to change us to allow that fit to be per, become perfect. Amen. Amen. We know that we are all very different. Each and every one of us uh, are, are uh, different in our genetic makeup. Our eyes are all different. Our fingerprints are all different. Our DNA uh, is very, very different for each and every one of us. Even our voice, and they use many of these different things to uh, identify people and to, uh, for recognition, even in technology, they use all these things because they know that we are all individuals. We're all extremely different in so many different ways, and even in our personality. Amen? For those of you that had gone through the Real Colors training and uh, seminar that we did here, we realized that we have many uh, different personality and temperaments among all of us. And it helps us to realize how different we are and, and begin to understand those differences maybe in a better way. And I don't know about you, but it helped me understand a lot about me. Amen? And I know that a lot of times we don't like to talk about those things because as individuals and human beings, we tend to focus on our negative, uh, the things we need to work on, but there's also a lot positive about us. We got some good things going. Amen? Come on. You know, it, it's not all doom and gloom. It's not all bad, but do we have some uh, struggles? Absolutely. But we've got a lot of things going because our God created us and made us in his image. He did not uh, create garbage, but God made us uh, with the opportunity to have a relationship with him so that we could be continually changed, uh, uh, discounting this flesh and, and, and repenting of it and allowing it to be crucified so that we could be made in a newness and likeness of our heaven. Father. Can you say amen? amen? Amen. And so we're all very different when it comes to our personalities and, and we're, you know, some of us are more, you know, uh, more, uh, a lot more concise or maybe a lot more uh, dedicated in certain areas. Some of us might be a little bit more relaxed. Uh, some of us might be a little bit more emotional. We're all so very different. We pay attention to different things. We focus on different things. Different things are important to all of us. And when somebody else doesn't value that, there's something wrong with them. Right? No, there's not. It's just that they've got different values, different needs, different strengths, different likes and dislikes. But we've also got many similar traits. Right? Even physically. We look generally the same physically. Uh, but we also have similar traits in our personalities. And that's because we're made by the same God who loves us, who cares about us. And, and we all connect and we all get along and we all build relationships and, and have our struggles according to these similarities and these differences. We're not perfect. Amen? We're not perfect. Newsflash, we're, we're not perfect. We make mistakes, every one of us. We fail and we struggle. We fall short and many other synonyms that, that all point to the same thing. But because he loves us, somebody say, he loves me. He loves. Say it again, he loves me. He loves. Because he loves me and wants a relationship with us and desires for us to be with him forever in heaven, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ came and shed his blood and gave his life for our mistakes, for our sin, which all of us have and all of us will continue to struggle in as long as we are in this flesh. But we can truly say that Jesus is for each of us as individuals because Jesus, everybody say Jesus, Jesus. is the perfect fit. Amen. Jesus is perfect just for me. Jesus can come into my life as different as I am from everybody else in my genetic makeup, in my build, in my personality, in my temperaments, and all of these things that make up who I am and all of these things that make up who you are and who we're growing into be. Jesus can come into our life and be the perfect fit for every single one of us if we let him. Can you say amen? Amen. I think we can rejoice in that. I think we can be glad in that because he doesn't come in and say, uh, yeah, wow, this is a little bit different. Have you ever started a project and realized you got in over your head? 
Absolutely. Oh, I think I'll do this because it doesn't look like it's going to be that bad. And, and you begin to take things apart or begin to get into it and begin to do it. And you realize it's much more complex or needs a lot more work than what you originally had intended. What do you do then? What do you do? You either have to press on and bite the bullet and, and pay the cost and get it all done or else you have to lay it aside or junk it or, or get rid of it. But when Jesus comes into a life, he doesn't come in to say, uh, oh, wow, Kathy Rhodes, yeah, I'm going to do something in her life and I'm going to bless her and, and minister to her and then get involved in Sister Kathy's life. And then Jesus say, whoa, wait a minute, you've got some, uh, you've got some issues that I was not aware of, and, and you've got some things that I don't know quite how I'm going to deal with or fix or repair. I don't know that I'm ready to invest that in you. He doesn't do that, does he? And he doesn't do it for me, and, and I'm really messed up. Amen. I, I'm really, I, I, man, when Jesus began dealing with me in my heart and my life, I don't know how uh, he could do it, but he comes into our live church and he sees the inconsistencies and he sees the failures and he knows what he has to work with, but he says, I can fit perfectly into that life. A God that created heaven and earth, a God that is holy in all of his ways, a God that is perfect, omnipotent, omniscient, and, and, and just... Words can't describe. And he can come into a life of flesh as messed up as we are or as perfect as we think we are. And he can fit exactly into that life. And he can help us and he can bless us and he can strengthen us because he's just for you and he's just for me. We try to make a lot of things fit, don't we? Going to Walmart about midnight, you'll see how people try to make things fit. <laughs> we try to make things fit in our life. Most all of us have in some way, shape, or form had to embrace, uh, maybe reluctantly, but to some degree embrace the technology that we're living in today. And whether it's a computer or a tablet or a, a personal electronic device, whatever it might be, there's always changes going on in those things, isn't there? And in all of these ads and all of these apps and all of these processes and things they're making available to us to, to fit our personal needs and to fit our desires and our likes and our hobbies and, and maybe, even to, maybe even to influence in a way we've never gone before or never thought of before, uh, they try to say that you're the, they're the perfect fit for you. And, and I don't know about you, but I've done this before. I've tried something out on my phone and said, oh, I'll install that. And later on, I find out that all it's doing is slowing everything else down in my life on my phone. And so what do I do? I have to uninstall that app because it's causing problems everywhere else. And I'm not, maybe it's because I'm not techie or anything like that, but, uh, you know, I, I don't understand. Then they try to come in and they try to add things, and then it takes a little bit farther than really what you thought it was going to be. Uh, we do that in our life. We think, oh, something like that might be good, and we begin to implement these things in our life because we're trying to make them fit into a place where it's only made for one thing to fit, and that's Jesus. And these things then begin to distract us and take us aside and, and cause us to be delayed and, and cause us to go a different direction. And, and Jesus is saying, really, you know, you don't really need all that to satisfy you. you don't, that is not where you're going to get your joy or your peace or your strength from. And we do that with so many things in our life. We even do that with anger. Anger fits so well in my life and my temperament or unforgiveness or an attitude or, or, or distractions or, or maybe it's even just hobbies or things like that and we try to get them to fit in our lives where these things were never meant to fit. And it causes a sin because we're putting it before our God and it separates us from our God. Jesus came to seek and to save that which was lost. Amen. He came and shed his blood on a cross for our sins. And his blood is able to cover a multitude of sins. It reaches, as we sing about, to the lowest valley. It can go to the top of the highest mountain. It doesn't matter what your life is or was or is going to be. Jesus can cover everything. He can restore and he can bring joy and peace and strength in our lives. And not only can he save us, 
from our sin and, and cause that separation and that, uh, that variance and that uh, disunity to be restored and bring us back in relationship with our Heavenly Father. But he also wants to be our best friend. He also, and not only does Jesus want to fit into those uh, uh, more ideal places of our life and into our schedule and to help us and to bless us in our finances and, and, and in all of these things and our strengths and our, and our future and our families, but he wants to come into our relationships and he wants to be there because he can help us in all those different areas. As I mentioned, we've got differences throughout each and every one of us and we've got similarities and in those things, uh, there are difficulties in relationships, isn't there? Because we're different. And we think that sometimes, uh, not that we think everybody else should be just like us, but in the, it, whenever it's a confrontation or whatever, maybe it's a struggle, we certainly think that they should try to see it my way. Right? But in this, listen to what Paul said in 1 Corinthians 9 and 22. He said, to the weak became I as weak that I might gain the weak. Well, I'm not weak, I'm strong. In fact, I'm very outgoing. In fact, if something needs to be done, I can come in and take charge of the situation. And in fact, if it really needs to be done, I can trample over everybody and I can get the job done. I'm not weak at all. Paul was not a weak individual. Paul was a very outgoing individual. Paul could be the man that came in and took charge and, and just plowed away through everything and made it happen if it needed to happen. But he said, to the weak I became as weak that I might gain the weak. He says, I am made all things to all men that I might by all means save some. In his humility, he recognized his limitations. He says, I'm going to do everything I can to try to identify with and help and relate to every individual I come across. I'm going to do my very best to understand them and to minister to them and to listen to them and, and try to put myself empathetically into their shoes and, and have sympathy in their situations and, and try to uh, have a relationship with them so that I might gain them and win them to Christ. And I'm going to do all things that I can for all men that I might by some means save some he didn't say save all because he understood his limitations Paul was going to do his very best but knew it would be impossible for him to reach every person but I truly believe that if everyone who is in the church who is saved today that was bought by the blood of Jesus Christ that has been born again of the water and the spirit and are walking in his truth and in his word, I believe that if every one of us had that attitude like Paul that said I will become whatever anybody needs me to become that I could gain them, I would maybe save some, then we could save all. Amen? That is a unity in the body of Christ. That is a fellowship of the believers together that live for God, that love God, are called according to his purpose. Jesus, on the other hand, could reach every person. Jesus had the understanding and the ability because he was the perfect man, because he was God, robed in flesh. He could come into any situation and he could relate to, uh, he could relate to somebody who seemed to have it all, uh, a young rich ruler who, who was very blessed and everything, and he could relate to him and minister to him and tell him exactly what he needed in his life. We struggle with that. We see somebody, you know, I mean, if we are out in our community and we see the rich, young individual who has all the popularity and the political prowess and the, the social influence and they're, and they're well-to-do, I mean, we want them in our church, right? Because we know that there's uh, opportunities there. And, and if we're just being tr transparent, we know that there's uh, situations where they can help in and be a great asset towards but Jesus said, all right, if you're going to really serve me, sell everything that you have, give it to the poor, and come and follow me. We struggle with identifying with that, don't we? Because that's not the way our world and our culture and even our flesh operates. But Jesus it was different. Even for this young man, even though he rejected it, the Bible says he went away sad because he had great wealth. Jesus still could fit into his life and give him exactly what he needed if he was willing to receive it. 
He could do it for that individual just as easily as he could do it for a leper or somebody who was outcast from society, an individual who was possessed by demons and tearing apart uh, even his body and physically abusing himself. Jesus could come into his life and be the perfect fit. He was just for the rich young ruler, and he was just exactly for the man in the Gadarenes. So we're all different. We don't easily connect with everybody but Jesus. Everybody say Jesus. Jesus can do it. Jesus is perfect in every way. He knows us better than we know ourselves. He is Jesus just for me, and he is Jesus just for you. Can you clap your hands to him again today and just be thankful that he knows every little thing that you have need of. He can provide everything for every situation of our life. Jesus said this in Luke 11 and 11. He said, if a son shall ask bread of any of you that's a father, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks a fish, will he give for him fish a serpent? Or if he asks an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? What he's saying is that if you have little ones, if you have children, people in your life that you're responsible for, or people that look up to you, people that you can provide for or help, and they ask you for something that they have need of, don't you normally give it to them? Of course you do. And you certainly don't give them the opposite. You don't give them something harmful. So he said, if you being evil know how to do this, if you being evil and being in your flesh and having these struggles and these failures and these inconsistencies, but yet when that comes down and the rubber meets the road, you can come into a situation and you can be there for that situation. How much more can God do that in your life? You got somebody you love in your life? Maybe a child, a grandchild, a niece, a nephew, a cousin? Somebody that, and that you've provided something for them? You've encouraged them? You've given them some good word or maybe helped them out or did something? Come on, somebody. You ever done that for anybody? And we're not perfect. So how much more... Does God want to do that for his children? How much more? Come on. I mean, we got to get this into our mind. We got to understand that Jesus is that perfect fit in our life for every day, every situation. He doesn't want us to get distracted or bogged down with things in life that we're trying to force into our life and fit into our life or hold on to when we need to be letting go of. He knows everything we need. And not only does he know everything that we need, he knows it before we ask. Matthew 6 and 7 says, when you pray, don't babble on and on as people of other religions do. <laughs> other religions includes Pentecostals. Don't do that. They think their prayers are answered merely by repeating their words again and again. You ever get there? He says, don't be like them because your father knows exactly what you need of even before you ask him. What's he saying? He's saying God is looking for a meaningful relationship and conversation with each and every one of us. He wants us just to sincerely pour out our heart to him and to open up and allow him to come in to our life and to come into our situation and to come in to our challenges and our struggles. He says, God knows exactly. Instead, I want you to pray like this and then he goes through the Lord's prayer. Because you know what, church? I want to tell somebody today that God knows all about your hurts. He already knows about that. He knows all of our disappointments and every failure. He knows the things that we struggle with every day. And he knows the name and reason of every person who has ever failed us. He knows our hopes and our dreams. He knows our deepest secrets. And he knows every victory. He knows everything about us and he loves us. And he seeks to be the one that we turn to for everything. Because we're so easily, you know, James said, don't be unstable. Don't be uh, wishy-washy in your prayers. Uh, because if you're like that, it's kind of like when you're driven by the sea and by the wind. Everything that comes into your life, every situation begins to blow you this way. And then something else happens and it begins to blow you the other way. But keep your eyes upon Jesus. We saw that with Peter when he got out of the boat. If he would just keep his eyes on Jesus and not the storm and not the situations in his life. 
He wants to be the one we turn to for everything. He knows every victory because he was there. He is a perfect fit for each and every one of us, and he knows how to connect with all of our various differences and all of our similarities. Jesus knows how to minister to each and every one of us. And I truly believe that sometimes people don't understand this. I had an opportunity to talk to somebody yesterday, you know, and, and uh, they were, uh, I was in a situation where I could talk with them and there's a couple things that, uh, that happened and, and that I addressed. And as soon as they understood, I don't remember how we got on the conversation of, of what I did, but their attitude changed. And they begin to tell me how, where, and when they were confirmed, and that they had young children that needed to be baptized yet. And they're, but they don't have that understanding that because they're being distracted. You know, if we who are in the church and filled with the presence of God, if we who understand that we need to be in the Word of God every day, and we need to pray every day, and we need to be in church every time the doors are open, open if that's us and we still struggle and we still get distracted, and we still allow other things in our life that weigh us down and, and, and pull us away from God and away from church, how much more somebody who doesn't know him? How much more somebody who's never had a true experience with him? How much more somebody who's weighted down with the sins of this world in their life? And they don't understand, just like many of us did not understand at one time in our life. And they're misled, and they don't realize that Jesus is that perfect fit. They're, they're, they're trying to fix things in their life with relationships. They're trying to fix things in their life uh, with substances. They're trying to fix things in their life with, with more money or more overtime or things like that. And they're missing out on what Jesus has for them. He knows everything we have need of. Amen? Amen. Now, somebody not, may not believe that Jesus is the perfect fit for them. There might be somebody in here today that doesn't believe that Jesus is the perfect fit for you, that Jesus loves you more than you could ever imagine, that Jesus has a plan for your life and wants to take you to a place in him. But once you have that experience and allow him to begin to fill your heart, to begin to fill my heart every day. Once we do that and it's continually operating in our life, it can't just be a one-time experience. It can't be just when there's excitement. It can't be just when the chips are up. But it's got to be at every point in our life that we're trusting him with every situation. We may not understand why things happen the way they happen. We may not understand why people do the things they do and why it affects us the way it does. But what we can understand and what we can put our faith and trust in is that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And that he will always be the perfect fit in your life. He will help you. Only then will that empty feeling begin to fade in our life. He knows everything you need. He's able to provide those needs. He is Jesus for every single one of us. But too often we don't allow him to be everything that he could be for us. Too often people get distracted, like I mentioned, and, and they begin to put things into their life that they think become a good fit that only weigh us down or slow us down or take us off course. And I'm not just talking about people in the world. I'm not just talking about people that are, are the down and out or as we would consider sometimes them uh, in our humanity, the bottom of the barrel or, or, or the low of the low. No, uh, I'm not talking about them. I'm talking about even when we believe that we are a more mature Christian. Well, I go to a church that preaches truth. I go to a church that believes you got to be born again of the water and the spirit. I believe that Jesus said true worshipers are going to worship him in spirit and truth. I believe you need to pray through and speak in tongues. I believe that God operates in the gifts of the spirit and still heals. I believe he's the same. I believe there is only one God and Jesus is his name. And I read my Bible as often as I can, even for us. There's still opportunities for us to try to wedge something in to our life that we're trying to make a fit for us that God never intended because it's taking place of him. 
He's saying, that doesn't belong there. I belong there. That's not going to bring you peace or joy. Only I'm going to. And we think, we, we have every excuse in the book. We do it for all different kinds of reasons. We, we, we really do. But Jesus is saying, anything you put before me becomes sin. It becomes a snare. It becomes a struggle for you in your life. And I think we've all been there. And we don't allow him to be everything he could be for us. It's easy for us to see where others are lacking. But are we truly receiving everything Jesus wants us to be in our life? Are we truly allowing him to be Lord of all? Are we truly allowing Jesus to make those decisions and to lead us by his spirit and by his word every day? It's a struggle, isn't it? Isn't it? I mean, because if it wasn't a struggle, there, there'd be just as many people in here as there was on Easter today. And there, if it wasn't a struggle, then all the people that used to attend this body of believers that, that are no longer attending today would be here if it wasn't a struggle. So what's keeping us from becoming like that? Allowing Jesus in our heart, in our life, to fit there perfectly every day because the more we allow room for other things, church, the more it's going to pull us away doesn't mean we have the right to be critical it doesn't mean we have the right to cast judgment or speak ill of anybody else no because which one of us could be in the same situation had it not been for the grace and mercy of God had it not been for maybe somebody praying for us like we ought to be praying for everybody else had it not been for one situation where God intervened or somebody sent somebody to intervene in our life See, if God is doing that through us or for us through somebody else, shouldn't we uh, be allowing God to uh, allow us in that same situation for someone? If we know somebody's struggling, if we know somebody's hurting, shouldn't we be allowing God to work through us in our life? Jesus is what we need most and what we need first. Every one of us. Would you say amen? Amen. Yeah. Amen. When we have uh, his spirit working inside of us, when we allow his word to be our, our guide and to help us every day, we begin to understand more and more he's the perfect fit. I don't need to try to fit in anywhere else, and I don't need to allow anything else to try to fit into my life. I've just got to allow Jesus to be first every day. Every day I've got to allow him to be first. You know, I'll just be transparent here. I'm just like anybody else. We've all got our strengths and weaknesses, right? We've all got ways that we operate better and ways that we operate worse. And, and you know, for me, I think I've shared this before, but I'm not a morning person. My wife laughs. I'm not a morning person. I struggle getting up in the morning. I don't know. I, I just do. And, you know, so then when I come out and when it's time to pray, I struggle with that and I really have to work at it and I really have to focus on it. But you know what? There's times when things need to be done that I can just get up and do it because I know it needs to be done. Why, why can we do that for our flesh? Why can we do that for, for things that one day are going to be gone? But we struggle doing that for Jesus. We need him. I need him. Every day. Because he wants to work through each and every one of us to build this church. We've got a goal, a vision. Sister Vicki, 100 people. It's possible. It's completely possible if we allow God and if we stay faithful. It's not going it, to happen through us waning and through us going other directions and through us being unfaithful and through us not allowing Jesus into our personal life every day. But it's going to happen the more and more we become like him as he's fitting into our life and, and filling, that, uh, filling his spirit inside of our heart and our mind as we begin to meditate upon these things and, and allow him to lead us and guide us and completely envelop us that we become more like who he was. And I believe that as a church body, we'll begin to reach more and more people. And the more people we reach, the more people we'll be able to reach. Amen? Let's stand together today. If we could just close our eyes as we begin to think upon him. 
And, and maybe this is encouraging us. Maybe this is once again convicting us. Maybe it's once again bringing remembrance to a situation or a commitment that we made a long time ago that maybe we've struggled in. Because we do struggle. We make commitments and say, God, I'm going to be faithful in reading my Bible. God, I'm going to read it through this year. And, and maybe you're struggling in that a little bit. Maybe in your prayer life. Maybe you decided, God, I'm going to be faithful to every church service every time it's open. And, and, and maybe you've struggled in that. Can I encourage you today to let Jesus talk to your heart. Maybe you decided, God, this year I'm going to win somebody to you. God, this year I'm going to teach a Bible study to somebody brand new. I'm going to disciple them to understand you and to know you better, God, and to bring you into your kingdom, God, to see them filled in your spirit and baptized in your name. Maybe God's bringing some things back to our mind and saying, you know what? I'm the perfect fit for you. I'm the perfect fit for you. You don't have to try to be satisfied in anything else. You don't have to try to find peace or joy in anything else. Because church, remember, all things work together for good to them that love God and that are called according to his purpose. Is it going to go against your flesh? Yes, it's going to go against your flesh. There's going to be times when things come up and say, you don't have time for that today. I'm too tired for that today. I'm too wore out for that. I don't have enough money for that. But yet we are the ones managing all of those situations in our life. God's saying, I just want you to put me first. I want you to keep me first every day. I don't know about you, but I want to get better at that. I want to get better at that. Because I want to become everything he's called me to be. I want to see him working in my life every day, doing the miraculous, opening doors, reaching people, bringing light and love into their life. I don't want to be uh, guilty of tearing down or being critical or causing somebody to struggle. I want to be confident in who he's called me to be. But I can only do that if he's fit perfectly into my life every day. Every day. Jesus, help us. Lord God, we are your church. We're your sheep of your pasture, God. You are the good shepherd who leads us and guides us. And I just ask today, Lord, that you would help each and every one of us to be about your business, to seek you daily, God, not to become distracted. Lord God, not to allow other things in our life that would take us away from you or keep us, God, from unity together and worshiping and, and in your word, God. But, Lord, that we would just stand firm in who you've called us to be. Stand firm in every promise that you've given us. And allow you, Jesus, to mold us and to make us into who you want us to be.